This episode will make you wish you paid more attention to your math teachers. We will explore how math and the markets go hand in hand for forecasting market trends using WD GAN square the range method. Make sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you find value. Hey everyone, ready to dive into something kind of wild. We're tackling how math might actually help predict the stock market. Yeah, it's a fascinating concept. Today, we're going deep on squaring the range. I know, <sighs> I know, math and markets. Mm -hmm. Sounds intimidating, right? <laughs> but trust me, we'll break it down so it's clear even if you're not a numbers person. Absolutely. Think of it less about complex equations and more about finding balance. Balance. Yeah, like a pendulum swinging back and forth. Squaring the range is about recognizing that balance between price and time in market cycles. Okay, I'm intrigued, but where did this whole idea even come from? Well, it all started with this trader, W.D. Gann, a bit of a legend in the field. He was convinced that markets don't just move randomly, they follow these predictable patterns, often geometric ones. Geometric patterns, huh? So mm -hmm. like shapes and angles hidden in the stock charts. Exactly. Gann developed all these methods using geometry, even astronomy and ancient mathematics to try and forecast market trends. And one of his most dedicated students, Michael S. Jenkins, spent over 50 years refining and using these techniques. Wow, 50 years. That's oh. serious dedication. So how does squaring the range actually work in practice? All right, so let's say the S&P 500 jumps from 4,200 to 4,500. That's a 300-point range, right? Right, a pretty significant move upwards. We take that price range and we square it, basically converting it into a corresponding time frame. So this 300-point move, according to this principle, might take roughly 300 days to fully play out. So if the market shoots up quickly, this is just it might swing back down after a period to sort of balance things out. You got it. And within that 300-day time frame, we'd pay close attention to key levels, especially the 50% retracement, which in our example would be 4,350. So it's not just looking at the price chart, but overlaying this time square to anticipate potential turning points. Exactly. Those levels become like gravitational points within that larger price time square. And this is where it gets really interesting. Oh, I love when you say that. Tell me more. Well, we don't just look at one squared range by itself. We start looking for multiple squared ranges, even across different time frames. Hold on, different time frames. So you're saying this works for both short-term and long-term trading? Absolutely. Imagine squaring the range on a daily chart to understand the bigger picture, the overall market direction. Then zoom in and apply the same principle to, say, a five-minute chart for intraday trading. So it's like having a multi-layered map of the market from the big picture down to the smallest moves. Exactly. And here's the thing. The more of these squared ranges or cycles that converge at a specific price and time... The stronger the signal. You got it. It's like having multiple pieces of evidence pointing to a potential shift in the market. This is really making me rethink how I look at charts. But let's be real. No single method can predict the market perfectly, right? You're absolutely right. That's why we always combine squaring the range with other indicators and, of course, smart risk management. Think of it as adding more tools to your analytical toolbox. All right, so we're not relying on just one piece of the puzzle. Yeah. So how does this price and time symmetry idea actually play out in the real world of trading? You mentioned the pendulum earlier. Can you unpack that a bit? Yeah, so remember how markets are always trying to find that balance, right? Right, like that pendulum you were talking about. Exactly. When you have a sharp, sudden move, say a big upswing, it's like pulling the pendulum way over to one side. Eventually, it wants to swing back to the center, right? Back to that equilibrium. Makes sense. So we're using this principle to anticipate those potential reversals or pullbacks in the market. Okay, so we're using price and time symmetry to get a feel for not just if the market might turn, but also how it might turn. Precisely. And here's where it gets really interesting. Jenkins, like his mentor Gann, was all about incorporating geometric principles and ratios into market analysis. You might hear traders talking about things like 45 degree lines or something called Fibonacci arcs. Wait, 45 degree lines, Fibonacci arcs. I'm kind of lost. How do those connect to squaring the range? Well, they're all tied together, all coming from this idea that markets move in these predictable, almost uh, geometrically harmonious ways. Imagine drawing these lines and arcs on a price chart right alongside your squared ranges. Okay. It adds another whole dimension of analysis. 
helps pinpoint potential support and resistance levels, price targets, maybe even the timing of those market turns. Okay, I'm trying to picture these lines and arcs intersecting with the squared ranges, like we're putting together a puzzle, right? Watch. Looking for those spots where everything seems to line up. You got it. And there's another layer here that's kind of wild. Jenkins found that these geometrically significant points, they often lined up with what we call psychological levels in the market. Psychological levels, what are those? You know, those round numbers, historical highs and lows that traders tend to fixate on. Right, like everyone gets excited when the Dow hits a new 10,000 point milestone or something. Exactly, so let's go back to that S&P 500 example. Imagine that 4,350 level, our 50% retracement point within that squared range also happens to be a previous high that the market just couldn't break through in the past. Okay, so now we have multiple layers of analysis all pointing to that same area. The squared range, the 50% retracement, and this psychological level based on past market behavior. That's a pretty strong signal, right? Absolutely. It significantly increases the likelihood of a, a notable reaction at that level. This is incredible, but I know you mentioned before you need to be careful. No strategy can be 100% right about the market. How can someone use all this knowledge responsibly what are the practical applications here? Right, you're right to be cautious. Scoring the range is a powerful tool, but it's not about predicting the future with, you know, 100% certainty. It's about tilting the odds in your favor. One way it does that is by helping you set those price targets. Instead of just kind of hoping for the best, I can use these squared ranges and geometric levels to say, okay, if the market moves this way, I'll aim to lock in profits around this price point. Exactly. It brings the structure and discipline to your trading. And maybe even more importantly, squaring the range can give you an edge in timing those entries and exits. Imagine anticipating a market reversal before it happens instead of reacting after the fact. That's huge. Talk about being ahead of the curve. But you, you mentioned risk management earlier. What's that look like in this context? That's a crucial point. Even with a confluence of signals suggesting a you know high probability setup, the market might not always behave as we expect. So even if it looks good on paper, we don't want to go all in on one trade based only on these principles. Exactly. Always, always use stop loss orders to manage your risk. So those are orders that automatically sell your position if the price drops below a certain point, right? Yeah. It's like an insurance policy on your trades. Exactly. It helps protect your capital if a trade goes against you. To recap, scoring the range can help set price targets, time our entries and exits, and manage risk all based on this really fascinating connection between price and time. You've got it. It's about understanding the uh, rhythm of the market, not just reacting to every little move. It's like we're learning to read the music instead of just dancing to the beat. But hey, remember that golden ratio we talked about earlier? How does that fit into all of this? Yeah, we can't forget about the golden ratio. It's like almost mystical, like some kind of secret code hidden in the markets. It's definitely fascinating. That ratio, 1.618, you might know it as phi. It's not just some random number. Oh, I've heard of phi. It's that thing with the spirals and the seashells and stuff. Oh, right? exactly. It pops up everywhere in nature. The spiral of a seashell, the arrangement of petals on a flower. And, well, some traders believe it also has significance in market movements. Okay, now I'm really curious. So how does it work? Do we use the golden ratio along with squaring the range? Think of it as another layer of analysis. We look for balance in price and time with squared ranges, right? Well, we can also look for those harmonious proportions and relationships using the golden ratio. For example, traders might use it to identify potential price targets or retracement levels within those larger squared ranges we talked about. So we're like uncovering these hidden connections and proportions within the market using these naturally occurring ratios. Exactly. The idea is that these ratios, like the golden ratio, can give us additional clues about where the market might find support or resistance. It all goes back to that concept of balance and predictable patterns. This is seriously cool stuff. For listeners who want to go deeper into squaring the range and the golden ratio, are there any resources you recommend? A great place to start is the golden ratio method workbook. It's a really practical guide to these techniques with clear explanations and real world examples. You'll see how both Gan and Jenkins actually used these methods in their own trading. Excellent. We'll make sure to link that in the show notes. So as we wrap up this deep dive into squaring the range, what's the key thing you want listeners to take away from this? Remember, squaring the range, it's not about just memorizing some formulas. It's about changing how you view the market. It's recognizing that price and time are connected, they influence each other, and those seemingly random movements, well, 
they might actually follow these predictable patterns. It's about understanding the rhythm of the market, that push and pull between price and time. Exactly. And once you start to see those patterns, understand those principles of balance and proportion, you can start making more informed trading decisions. Well said. So to everyone listening, as you continue your trading journey, ask yourself, what if the key to the market isn't some super complicated thing, but actually lies in these elegant principles of math and natural law? This is The Deep Dive, signing off until next time. Keep exploring.